Well, it seems that somebody in the G.I. Joe Origins movie has common sense and actually has this good head on their shoulders. Welcome back to Orange Hat Reviews, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So, yeah, we all know that G.I. Joe was, or Snake Eyes G.I. Joe movie was a serious $110 million bomb. And how they had to play identity politics for a character who literally everybody wanted to be and was designed that or the character was designed that way to remain mysterious and now the uh, Storm Shadow actor of this film Andrew Koji admits the movie lacked integrity so this is from Bounding Into Comics shout out to you boys and girls speaking with Inverse Koji bemoaned how he was getting typecast following his role as Assam on Warrior. I'm getting typecast already. Action stuff is just being sent to me and nonsensical stuff. And I think it's a fight to get out of that for me. To try and not do those things or to try and do something quality and not something mind-numbing. After this, it could just all be downhill for me. So next, Koji admitted the Snake Eyes film lacked integrity, but at least for me, or at least for now, my experience on Warrior makes me go, okay, I'd like to do stuff with integrity. And G.I. Joe really wasn't that, was it? He went on, Hollywood is just obsessed with telling the same old thing over and over again. Firstly, remake. Secondly, it's gotta be based on IP. Third, it's so absurd that I'm just like, hold on, people want originality. Where is it? What is going on here? That's true. There is no real originality in Hollywood anymore, folks. Returning to Snake Eyes, Koji revealed he knew the film would struggle at the box office when it first released. Snake Eyes didn't do too well, which I knew it wasn't going to. The film, which hit theaters in 2021, during the height of the pandemic, uh, only grossed 28.2 million million at the domestic box office and another six. Point four million internationally for a global gross of 34.6 million. The film had an estimated budget of 88 million. That means the film needed to at least make 220 million to break even. Given it made nowhere near that, and the split what or and the split the theaters take from the box office, it's quite likely this film lost around 110 million dollars. So, as for the G.I. Joe's teased at the end of Transformers Rise of the Beasts, Koji did not believe Hasbro's future plans will tie into Snake Eyes. I think they're probably going to reboot from the ground up. I'm cool. Like, or I did like Storm Shadow Tommy. As he continued, he revealed that the creators behind Snake Eyes' movie failed it. I found a way to love him, and I think there would be or there would have been something to do. There would have been a really cool Storm Shadow film if they did it right. So, yeah, and then it just goes on into the promotional stuff. So this guy basically is calling out how the movie lacked integrity, how he knew it wasn't going to do well. We all knew it wasn't going to do well because Larry Hama, the guy who created Snake Eyes, was basically saying... We needed to update it for more modern audiences and be more politically correct and well and to get behind a origin story that both older fans and newer fans would accept. Well, except that the uh, older fans, all the ones that outnumbered all these newer ones didn't accept that. I grew up on GI Joe. I grew up playing with the toys, the action figures, and I loved playing with Snake Eyes the most. Which is why his character, or that action figure, broke sooner than all the others, was because basically he was everybody's favorite. Everybody wanted to be him. Nobody knew what he looked like. That air of mystery that Snake Eyes had, and that other many characters and other franchises have, is what made them so special. Is what made them so great. Having a character like Snake Eyes is basically the equivalent of. Star Wars's Yoda character. You don't know where he comes from. You don't know what his species is. All you know is that he was very wise. He was very powerful. 
And having that mystery is what kept him awesome. A lot of kids my age and a lot of people my age now and whatnot back when I, or a lot of kids my age when I was, uh, or when Star Wars was a lot bigger, loved Yoda's character more than other Jedi. I mean, yeah, you like Kenobi, yeah, you like Anakin, yeah, you like this guy, that guy. But Yoda was one of the most loved. So was Snake Eyes for G.I. Joe. He, or When you hear G.I. Joe, you think Snake Eyes. Because Snake Eyes is the everyman, so to speak, even though he is also the more skilled, the most skilled. He could freaking... He could sneak up on you on a freaking gravel road at high noon and take you out. You wouldn't even see his shadow when or before he was right on top of you. you that's snake eyes. I mean, and they had to basically make the mystery of his character in their failed movie less of a mystery and be like, oh yeah, that's Snake Eyes. They're going to take off his mask, they're going to show you his face, they're going to show you his background, his story, and all of that. Nobody wanted that. In the G.I. Joe movie that they did, The Rise of Cobra, I honestly thought that Ray Park did a great Snake Eyes. They're saying, oh, you can't really emote that well. You want to see his face, that way you can see his emotions. No! Uh, Ray Park actually did a very good job at emoting in that movie without seeing his face in fact all you really had to do was focus on his actions his body language spoke for him and that was one of the great things about Ray Park's character of Snake Eyes and his interpretation of Snake Eyes he did a great job when I yes those movies are awful in their own merit but still Ray Park did great Snake Eyes he did a great Snake Eyes, and I honestly think that this one, I still haven't watched it, I don't plan on watching it, because it's an abuse against the character I grew up with. And I don't care if the creator of the of the uh, character says, well, you're just a shallow person and you need to get with the times. No, the times that are today are really not worth getting with, because honestly, they suck. I would rather be living in a time where it was well a lot better where people didn't hate each other so much and this bullshit political correctness wasn't perverting our society but anyway folks that's going to be the video you all know the drill like comment subscribe share all that jazz what do you think of uh andrew koji's comments do you agree with them the movie lacked integrity and that's what led to it bombing or do you think that the movie was great and that it, uh, was, or that you just it, liked it to like it? Let me know. All your thoughts down in the comment section below, folks. This has been Orange Hat Reviews. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for tonight. I will be on Jade Shadow's channel talking Ghostbusters 2. Anyway, have a wonderful day, folks. And always remember, stay humble.